Good morning, everyone. I, I would like to call to order the, um, the general meeting of the NWCP for Anne Arundel County at this time. And we're going to start off with a, um, a prayer. We'll get approval of the agenda. Um, minutes of the previous meeting were reviewed that we're going to have a guest speaker. So at this time, let me whisper prayer and then we'll go straight to the approval of the agenda. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, we bow at this time, worshiping you as the only God, and we thank you for Jesus, who died for us on Calvary's cross. We ask the Lord that you reign supreme in the meeting and have your way. Um, God, our hearts and our minds, oh Father, to be on one accord. And oh, Father, even when we are not on one accord, let the love continue to reign supreme in the meetings, letting us all remember that the NWCP Constitution bylaws are to govern in all that we do. So we are in line with the charter goal of the NWCP to champion equal rights and elimination of racial prejudice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda so we can proceed here? To get a chance to look over it right quick. I'm motion. This is for Solomon Monroe. I'm motion to approve the agenda. Okay, there's a motion. Been moved. Second. 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 Uh, yes. The agenda is approved. Let us proceed now to the minutes of the previous meeting. And... Um, Sister Brown, you're going to have that on the screen so you can kind of glance at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Ms. Richardson. Okay, good. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. I appreciate it. Um, I had a chance to look over them, but anybody who has not, I had to look over the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. <laughs> Total five pages here. Ms. Richardson, when you scroll down to the to the last page, please let me know. Okay. Are you there, Ms. Richardson? Yes. Yeah, someone just asked to join, and once they join, they shut the whole computer down. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let me give you a minute there. Thank you for your effort. Okay, good. That's the agenda. So we look at the previous, uh, the minutes from the previous meeting now. <laughs> yeah, continue to scroll down, Miss Richards. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the last page. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the meeting minutes? From... Yes. All right, if you would display that. Okay. And just go down uh, very briefly, please. Okay, that's the end of it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Richardson. Okay, have you had a chance to review the minutes of the previous meeting? Can I get a motion for approval so we can proceed? So move. Oh, second. Second, okay. Now that we have a chance to review the minutes of the previous meeting, it's been moved and second. At this point, um, Reverend Joseph has asked a, a guest speaker to come who spoke at the state conference concerning the um, the health care for all. So at this point, I'm going to put it in the hands of Mr. Downey so we can go ahead and bring our guests forward. Thank you, President Jones. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to see you all in person and also virtually. Uh, this morning, our guest speaker, uh, he is not a stranger to the NAACP, uh, both at the state level and also at the local level. Uh, I've heard uh, our guest speaker in the past before. And again, he's going to give a presentation on early health care for all. 
So at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Vinny DeMarco. Let's give him a hand. Well, thank you all so very much. It's a pleasure to be here, Mr. President. Thank you for inviting me. And I want to thank my colleague, Jonathan McKinney, for all his help in uh, reaching out across the state. Um, uh, I am a big fan of the NAACP, a lifetime Baltimore City member. And I was just on the phone this morning with my brother, Nick DeMarco, who is the vice president of the Peekskill New York branch of the NAACP. So he sends his, his regards. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here to talk with you all about where we are on our Healthcare for All uh, campaign. Um, like you all, I was thrilled about Governor Westmore's wonderful inaugural speech and everything he's done since. And in his inaugural speech, he talked about the healthcare progress we made and how we have still hundreds of thousands of uninsured people and we have to leave them not behind. And, and that's our goal, and we're working closely with the administration to achieve that goal. Uh, but first, uh, I just want to say that uh, Maryland has made a lot of progress. Could not have happened without the NAACP. Special thanks more President Gerald Stansberry, current President William Flowers, and you all have done so much. My colleague Priscilla has helped us. We, we thank you very much. And let me just go over quickly the progress we've made, because we need to Keep that in mind as we move forward. We have gone from 13% uninsured to 6% uninsured. 13% to 6%, that's 400,000 people. We did some of that before the Affordable Care Act. With your leadership, we defeated the tobacco and alcohol lobbies and raised the cigarette and tobacco taxes, which dramatically reduced teen smoking and underage drinking. And we used that money to expand healthcare to 100,000 lower income people even before the Affordable Care Act is really tremendous. Now, of course, thanks to President Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act, we've done tremendously better. And President Biden, Vice President Harris, the Inflation Reduction Act has built on the Affordable Care Act so that we've been able to really reach and cover a lot of people who were uninsured. Now, I want to emphasize, not every state has done everything Maryland has to fully implement the Affordable Care Act. Some states have done very little Sadly, these states like uh, Florida and Texas still leave millions of people uninsured. That's very sad. But in Maryland, we've taken full advantage of this wonderful law, and that's how we've been able to go to uh, fifth best in the nation. You can be very proud of that, fifth best in the nation at 6% uninsured. Um, the first best is Massachusetts at 3%. Our goal is to go way past them and get to 0% uninsured. Um, but it, it won't be easy to do that. I want to lay out for you our plan short-term and long-term to achieve that. But first I wanna talk about two things that Maryland did in 2019 to lead the nation going forward. One was something called the First in the Nation Prescription Drug Affordability Board. It is in place now to make high cost drugs more affordable. Very, very important. And one of our goals of this session is to make sure that board has all the funding needs. The second really exciting law we passed in uh, 2019, something called the Easy Enrollment Healthcare Law. And there's a, something about it in this packet here. And I wanna highlight for you that that made Maryland the first state in the nation where if you're uninsured, you can sign up at tax time. If you missed the open enrollment period or otherwise didn't know you're eligible, at tax time, everybody, including us, all of us are asked, are you uninsured? If you say yes, then you're asked, can we, can we work to get you enrolled? And you say yes again, the process has started and over 100,000 people have checked that box and over 10,000 people have gotten actually enrolled, most of them in Medicaid, which is very exciting. Then we pass another law uh, that um, that would um, uh, does, does the same thing at unemployment insurance time. So at unemployment insurance, Maryland's the only state in the nation where people are at. Now that you, you are unemployed, you need health care coverage. A lot of people don't know that. They're now eligible for free or low cost health care coverage, and thousands have gotten enrolled now. These have been very exciting um, tools that we've enacted and we're working uh, to implement it. So, where do we go from here at 6% uninsured to 0%? Well, we've got a three point program, which thank you for the NAACP uh, endorsing. And that is, to, um, that is to do three things. One, make sure that everybody who is um, presently 
uninsured, eligible for free health care, but somehow not enrolled, gets enrolled. And we think that 100,000 or so Marylanders are eligible for free health care, but not enrolled. Find them and enroll them. We want to provide additional state subsidies like Massachusetts does to get people more health care. And we want to remove immigration barriers because so many of our friends in Maryland pay taxes or are fellow Marylanders, but they're, they're have, because of federal immigration barriers, can't get health care. So we thank you for endorsing the long-term plan. And I just want to say, uh, we're probably in the district right now with one of our key leaders on all this, uh, Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick, who was the lead sponsor of many of these measures and is now the wonderful chair of the House Government Operations Committee, Healthy Government Operations Committee. And Senator Jim Rosepep is a, a sponsor of the unemployment insurance bill. So there are a lot of folks in Anne Arundel County who are, who are taking, the, taking the lead. But let me tell you um, uh, where we are for the 2023 session and where we could use your help. The packet I gave you at the front lists our five agenda items. There's an op-ed right behind that from me and the Baltimore Sun that describes them. Um, we want to first fully fund the Prescription Drug Affordability Board. We're trying to get them an additional million dollars, and we're working with the administration to, to do that. Um, the second item on there, SB 601, uh, is a very important law involving uh, subsidies for young people. Senator uh, Brian Feldman of Montgomery County and Delegate Ken Kerr of Frederick County got a law passed two years ago that created a state-only program to provide additional subsidies for lower-income young people between the ages of 18 and 34, many of whom can't afford health care even with a federal subsidy. Some of their premiums went down from like $100 a month to $1. 17,000 new young people got enrolled, 46,000 people were helped. I have some young friends who were getting, had deductibles of like six or seven thousand dollars a year, were having a really hard time getting good health care. With these subsidies, they've got much better care. And they are really being helped by this law. It was a two year pilot that ends this year. So there's legislation we're putting into under the same Senator Feldman and Delegate Kerr to make it permanent. And there's actually a hearing of this, this coming week on that um, in the House Government Operations Committee. It's not on here, but the House number is HB814. So it's SB601 and HB814. Um, uh, uh, we would love your help in reaching out to key uh, legislators uh, who are uh, involved. And two, this is going to the Senate Finance Committee on March 1. It's the House on February 23rd, March 1 in the Senate. But there are there are uh, there are two uh, senators in um, from Anne Arundel County who are on the Finance Committee: Senator Pam Vidal and uh, Senator uh, Giles, uh, new Senator Giles, um, District 33. The two of them are on the Finance Committee. We would love it if they got a note from the NAACP branch asking them to support SB 601, because SB 601 is is that is is very very important. If this doesn't pass, a lot of these young people who are now eligible, who are now enrolled, will lose their additional subsidies and may have to lose their health care coverage. It makes no sense uh, to do that. We want to continue this progress. Um, and uh, we, 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 uh, we have the support of the state NAACP, and, and uh, Mr. Flowers testifies as many of these bills as he can. But uh, I think for those two senators from Anne Arundel County, I know you all uh, would, would be great. Um, and also, Senator Alfred is not on this finance committee, but she's mm -hmm. on the budget. So a note to her would also be helpful. Um, the third item on here is outreach for small employers uh, to get help them and enroll their folks in health care. There are many uh, employees of small businesses who um, don't know that they're eligible for free or very low-cost health care under the Affordable Care Act. This provides by money for the health exchange to educate the small businesses how to get their employees enrolled. And Willie Flowers has testified on that and is a big proponent of that. Um, and and we, we hope to get this enacted too and is get Senate Bill 59. And we would love for you to, in your letter to uh, the Senate, the Anne Arundel Senators to mention that bill also. Um, the fourth item on there uh, is expansion of healthcare to uh, 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 immigrants. Uh, uh, immigrants who have immigration barriers either because they're undocumented but they've been here less than five years with documents that can't get coverage. And we all suffer when they go to the hospital and can't pay their bills and makes our premiums go up. And it's just not right. 
for folks to not have health care coverage. So that's another item that's before that same committee. And finally, number five, uh, a bill we're really excited about, Senator Malcolm, Augustine, and Delegate uh, Lord Chirkudian, which would take folks who are on SNAP. So there are people on SNAP, which used to be called food stamps coverage, who are eligible for Medicaid, but don't know about it, not enrolled. This would simply automatically enroll. If you're on SNAP, you'd be automatically enrolled in Medicaid. We think 60,000 people would get that kind of coverage, which would be really, really great. That also had a hearing of before that same committee. So in other words, all these things are going to the Finance Committee in which Senator Biden, Senator Bidel, uh, Biden, Senator Pam Bidel, and uh, Senator uh, uh, Giles are on. And we love, uh, Don Giles, we love your help in, in reaching out to them. Um, so I've talked a whole lot, sorry, but I wanted to give you a thorough understanding of our progress. Thank you very much, the NAACP for making it happen and where we need to go from here. We pass all these laws, we won't reach 0% uninsured, but we will come a lot closer. And working with the Moore Miller administration, we hope to take it the whole way in the next couple of years. So that's all, Mr. President. I got any questions or yeah, any questions from Mr. DeMarco from anybody concerning this? Thank you for this thorough uh, handout. This is pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, Benny, for always doing what you do and continue to do what you do. Thank you. <laughs> Just saying hi, Benny, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you're asking the support of multiple bills. Right. Will you let us know, so in reference to the letter that can be written to support okay. the bills here, just give us a little synopsis or timelines where they are. Are they, um, is it testimony time? Is it where yeah, it's we are? It's a good question. something that you can also email, so that way when Mr. President does write up this letter, once we agree upon the letter, He'll have that in his notes as well. Well, those are great questions, Priscilla. Let me do this. We'll 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 come up with a draft. Jonathan and I will come up with a draft letter that incorporates all of these. Uh, and um, uh, of these, Senate Bill Six Hundred One hearing is on March one. If, if Mr. President, if you or someone could testify there, that would be great. Um, uh, Will Willie has testified on the small business one. I know he's pulled in a million directions. Well, we would love it if, if, if a representative of, of this organization could testify on March 1 before the Senate Finance Committee. And I can work with Priscilla and Jonathan on, on the details. Of. The other ones have pretty much had their hearings already uh, and a letter which would be great. So um, specifically, Priscilla, the request is on March 1 to, for someone to testify for SB 601 and then a, a letter which we'll draft for you to go to all the senators. Oh, when, when you when you draft up this letter, if you don't mind, putting the names of the people who will be writing letters to for three, four, and five. Years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the names of them, you know, address of info, email, something like that, so we'll know. I'll work, I'll work all that with Jonathan Priscilla. Okay, wonderful. wonderful. We'll, we'll, we'll work out a, a letter to whom it should go and how to email it. Yeah, yeah. And everything. Yeah, just the person email address. That's to keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He person and emails. And basically, it's the, the three Anne Arundel senators Senator Vital, Senator El Prith, and Senator Guy. That, okay. that would be really helpful. Right, that seems pretty simple. Yeah. Um, any more questions for Mr. DeMarco? So, so my, Ms. Richardson. Um, Ms. Richardson, we have any hands up for a question? For Mr. DeMarco? We do. We actually have a couple questions in the chat. Um, Carol asked if someone would please send out a recap of the bills, their numbers, and a brief description so they can write down individual letters in support of the bills. Mm -hmm. I will email and, you this document so you can email it away. Okay, sir. Perfect. And Tracy asked if um, those online have access to the handout that the speaker has also handed out. Okay, he's going to send it to me. I yeah, I'll, I'll send you the packet on, uh, in, on, 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 uh, by email and you can send it email and the, the email address is at, at the bottom of the agenda so you just send it there yeah. or also uh I, I don't have the agenda so um you remember the communications i had with you mr demarco yes yes about you the, you send it to me. directly with you Thanks. yeah i think brother jones you were on there as well okay, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so i have sure. one email where i can do a reply all get yeah. everything going yeah okay probably probably monday oh wonderful monday. okay you interested any more hands that is all Okay. All right, Mr. DeMarco, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Oh,
we have a small responsibility to Mr. Marshall. Will you just let us know the status? Of yes, yes. So that we can report on our agenda on what we participated in and how effective this was. I'll get that all to you and then um, I'd be happy to come back in, in the spring or summer to brief you on your every next steps. I did, I did have a question. I was wondering about the whether or not you've heard from Anne Arundel County or the Anne Arundel County Health Equity Office at all about their support of any of these bills or their- Well, Sewer Pittman is very supportive. Uh, so, so the county executive, actually the county executive, I'm glad you're trying that county executive Pittman will testify in favor of the youth subsidies bill on, on March 1. And are there any equity or uh, race related disaggregation of this data that you have? Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, the small business one, um, uh, Maryland has more uh, African American owned small businesses than any other state as a proportion, and also women owned. Uh, so we, we think that's a very, very important equity goal. And also the same for the um, uh, youth subsidy. The majority of the folks benefited are, are Spanish minority folks and uh, Latino. As a, uh, a lot of new Latino enrollees now. So the, also the same for saying of the hundred thousand people that you say are uninsured, um, how many underinsured people do you expect us to improve their insurance with? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I don't have a number on that, and it, it's so hard to estimate that. Because different people's views of uninsurance are very are very different, so I don't know if there's one number. But I do know that I have examples of young people who were able to go from really bad insurance with huge six thousand dollars deductibles to insurance that really covers them through the youth subsidies. I don't. I don't. The closest number I can give you is that um, in the youth subsidy law has benefited forty six thousand Marylanders. So 46,000 Marylanders got better care as a result. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeMarco. I believe that's all. Thank you, so, for, thank you very time. much. We appreciate your coming, sir. We'll thank you for the report. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Also, uh, I, will say I want to give a shout out to Jonathan uh, McKinney as well. He used to be our former what, Region 7 director for the NAACP. And so he has a long history uh, as a member in organization. I mean, so. you introduced me to Mr. DeMarco. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for that. We appreciate that. Okay, everybody, at this point here, <clears throat> going back to our agenda, we're going to proceed with the report of officers and um, uh, the president. I'm going to start off with my report. I encourage everybody who wants to get a copy of my report in detail to just let me know and I'll provide you a copy. Uh, but I want to kind of speak in general first. Two things, before I get to my report, I want to share something uh, that, that's important because I'm a new president and we're trying to learn one another. And so it's important that we kind of understand what Reverend Jones is thinking about. Um, something occurred that made me go back to the bylaws and the constitution because I realized I still need to learn, I'm learning. And so I wanna share a couple of things there that, that really grabbed my attention and the type of things that I'm focused on as we have these meetings. And so I wanna share that first very briefly then we'll go to my report real quickly. Um, something that grabbed my attention as I was reviewing the bylaws is just understanding the objectives of the branch. What is our objective as an NWCP branch? And then also the methods that we are to use. And so I wanna, I wanna share this with everybody because it's important that everybody understand what I'm thinking about and what I'm focused on as I hear reports and things of that nature. Uh, Article two of the bylaws, um, part one C, the purpose of the units. And I want everybody just to hear this very quickly. The purpose of the branches shall be to improve the political, educational, social and economic status of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities to eliminate racial prejudice, to keep the public aware of the adverse effects of discrimination and to take lawful action to secure the elimination of racial discrimination, to seek legislation and policies at the local level or at levels or at other levels if requested by the state or the national office. That's kind of a heart of it. So our objective is to make sure we improve the political, educational, social and economic status of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities to eliminate racial prejudice. How do we go about doing that? So when I'm hearing the reports from the committees, that's what I'm thinking about. What is it that we're doing to make sure that we advance it? The political, educational, social, and economic sense of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities to eliminate racial prejudice. So that's what's in my mind as I'm hearing reports. Next thing is, I'm hearing, I'm listening to reports for this. 
the methods that we're going to use. If you're asking the branch to support what you're doing, provide you in line with the objectives of the of, of the branch. I'm listening for the methods that they have here in Article Two, Article Two, Part Two. The objective shall be direct action, litigation, legislation, and political action. So when I hear you give your your your, your committee report. And I know it's in line with the objectives of the of the of the branch. Then I'm, I'm, in my mind, I'm saying, okay, what, what do you want the branch to do? Do you want direct action, legislation, litigation, or some type of political action? So this is my mind, yo. I'm going back to the bylaws because I realize I got to understand this thoroughly. And so I want everybody to know my mind is the bylaws. If anything happens in the, in the branch, any disagreement, anything, I'm going right to the bylaws. To find so I make sure whatever I put in writing, especially if I put in writing, I will have a bylaw provision to support what I'm saying. So I just want to share that first so everybody know what I'm thinking because we're all learning one another. If for some reason Reverend Jones does something that you think is wrong, I don't have any problems with that. Give me the bylaw provision or the constitutional provision, and I will get in line. I just want to make that very clear because I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to run this thing the way I want to run. Mm -mm. My mind is on the bylaws of the constitution, and so I just want to say that concerning my report. <clears throat> I'm not going to give you the details of my conversations with these various government officials I've been meeting with, but everybody is welcome to read my report. I gave good details about my meetings and what we talked about. These are the meetings I've already had. I've had a meeting with the superintendent of Anne Arundel Schools, Dr. Mark Bedell. I had a meeting with the president of the NWCP, Mr. Willie Flowers. I also met with the Maryland Comptroller, Ms. Brooke Learman. Met with the state treasurer, Mr. Derek Davis. Chief of Independent Investigations Division of the Office of the Attorney General, Ms. Dana Mulhauser. I met with the Chief of Police for Anne Arundel County, Chief uh, Amal Awad. I met with the County Executive, Mr. Stuart Pittman. I met with Luke Parker with the Capital Gazette to make sure we have a good relationship. We have to have a press conference. I have to make a statement about something that happened like I did with respect to Mr. Nichols. Excuse me. I was in a joint meeting on yesterday also with the uh, our new uh, sheriff, Everett Sester. These are the meetings I've had. All of the meetings were wonderful. And I'm trying to establish a good, solid relationship with these government officials. So when something comes up that the NWCP is trying to push, they know we got Reverend Jones call. We got a good relationship with Reverend Jones. Let me tell you what, it, what the NWCP for Anna the Cutter, what we need. So that's my goal to establish good, solid relationships in all of those meetings I had. Absolutely magnificent. Matter of fact, they were in Reverend Jones, can we meet every quarter? They're asking me. And that's exactly what we want as our branch. So we got something we want to get accomplished. I can go there. Hey, you want to meet me? Here's what we need. So I want everybody to know that. <clears throat> These are the meetings I have in the future. This is the meetings um, uh, that we have on the agenda here to meet. Uh, Attorney General Anthony Brown, we already got that set. Uh, Chief of Police, Mr. Edward Jackson, he asked me, Reverend Jones, when we going to meet? Uh, Director of Office Management, Kevin M. J. Simmons, Reverend Jones, when we going to meet? Uh, Anna Rundle County Sheriff, I met with him already, Mr. Susker, and the governor of Maryland, West Mo. We're trying to schedule it because he's so busy. And so I just want everybody to know all of the meetings I'm going to is to get a good, solid relationship so we can accomplish our goals. And whatever we want to do, I can go to him and talk to him about. If you want to see some details of the meetings that I have, my conversations that's in my report, you're welcome to see it. All you got to do is let me know. I attended a community meeting on January 26, 2003, concerning the serious problems at the Woodside Garden Apartments Complex. City officials were there to express their concerns, and I was asked to speak. And of course, I expressed once people kind of, the stuff that was saying was going on at the, at the Woodside Garden Apartment Complex were almost unbelievable. Almost. I mean, rodents putting put, put people out because they're trying to do some renovation, put them in a, in a hotel, that's a roach hotel. I mean, just unbelievable. People up there crying. It was unbelievable. So when I shared up there, I mentioned to them that I'm just stunned that a 21st century owner of a public complex got allowed this to take place. And so I made contact with an alderman who's following up on this, and he's going to update me about whether they're making the improvements. Of course, they were there, you know, saying we're doing what we can do. So um, apparently, they've been saying that for a long time. So um, Alderman, the young man, I can't think of his name, Alderman Gay. Hey. Gay, yeah. Alderman Gay, yeah. He and I talked afterwards, because he's on top of this, and so he's going to keep me updated and to find out what's going on there. Um, uh, right now, we're working on a legislative agenda for our meeting on February 24th with the delegates. Uh, Mr. Wadis gave us a nice draft. I got some revisions I need to make. Um, Dr. Dodoni informed me this morning that she has some things she want to go ahead and put in. All the chairs, as I've been asking now for a couple of weeks, 
if you have a legislative agenda, something that you want on the document that we're going to have in front of us when we meet the delegates, please let me know. I would like to have all that. I would like to have this concluded by Monday. Dr. Donald told me she'll get it to me tomorrow. Uh, so I'm talking about all the chairs now. We have. If you don't, if I don't hear from you by Monday, we're going to try to finalize this. That's why they're not. So we'll have uh, what we're going to go before the delegates with. My preference is that the chairs of the various committees will speak since you know what your legislative agenda is. And so, but I need to hear from you first and then you will speak when we have the meeting. That's my, that's my preference. Um, on February 3rd, I formed the extended position of chair of the press and publication committee, Ms. Joanne Bond. That's the lady who does this, who, 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 who done this magnificent newsletter that we have here. And so, and so I had to get her to uh, assist me because I couldn't get the other, the past chair to, to assist me. And she just stepped in in such a magnificent way in the executive board. Uh, of course, uh, agree with me that's what when I made is. sure. I'm sorry. Well, that's what that's what the newspaper won that. That's what. Oh, they get, oh yeah. Let me show. I'm. So, yo, this is the war we got for the news. I want everybody to see it. I've been seeing pictures of it. I've been seeing pictures. That's my first time actually seeing it. Put my hands on it. So you have to meet it. Make sure you come on and touch it. Got some weight on it too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, of course. In WCP 2022 Thalhammer Award. Publications class two, first place, Anne Arundel County, uh, Anne Arundel Branch, Anne Arundel, Maryland. This is the award we got for this magnificent newsletter. Thank you, Judge uh, Barber, so, for your hard work. And all the people, there's a whole, as a matter of fact, if you look on the back of the newsletter, Joanne Vine, Asha Callahan, Vicki Gibson, Stephen Whitey, newsletter team. And then, of course, we have, um, let's see here. And so other people contribute as well, like uh, uh, Judge Barber. And others, and so uh, we got on the back of the newsletter. You see the people who are on the newsletter team, so you applaud them for their hard work. Wonderful job with this. And so the person who uh, did created this for me is Joanne Bond. Ms. Joanne Bond, she's the one who's our new press and publications chair. So at that point, brothers and sisters, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, conclude. I share what I want to share. Please let me know if you want to read the details of my meetings with these government officials. And we have some good understanding there. And all you got to do is let Reverend Jones do it, and I'll give you a copy of this, okay? All right, any questions about what I just shared? Check one online. Yes. Uh, does the Richardson, any questions? Does the Richardson, can you hear me? Yes, there's one question. Okay, great, great. Come on, who is it? And let's see what the question is. This is Reverend Morris, and I have a question. Yes. Um, I think that uh, obviously you're doing a wonderful job. You're in your new to position, and so on and so forth. And we appreciate the expert, ex, uh, the professionalism that you're bringing to the position. I do have a question, though, about your report about your meetings. You said that you want to first establish certain relationships with these government officials. So my question is, at what point will you circle back? and start to address the existing challenges that we have with some of these individuals and namely our police department. Um, yes. And I have, I really want to find out where you uh, stand on that, if it's appropriate to ask that question at this time, if not, I'll hold the question, but where do you circle back in your meetings and start to address uh, the challenges? Because your, your uh, thoughts and your feedback to these agencies uh, are very important to the more than 20 or more organizations across the county that are working on various issues uh, with in reference to police accountability. Yes, thank you for the question, uh, Reverend Morris. One of the things that I'm trying to do, and this is my approach, every president is different. Mm -hmm. My approach is to make sure I have a good rapport with these government officials. Uh, after we have a good rapport, then you're in a position, I believe, to address things more specifically. Uh, and, and, and more than one of my meetings, some of these government officials were upset about things that were put in the media uh, from people who are part of this branch negatively about them. So before I can even talk to them about addressing anything specifically, I got to make sure first I had to address that with the meeting in the meeting. And then once if once I finally got them to a place where I believe we had a beautiful, beautiful rapport, they asked for another meeting. So as I go forward with the meetings in the future, the next meeting or the third meeting, then I can become more specific. I did not want to approach them with specific things. I, even though I did with one thing that Reverend Morris brought to my attention, I did that one particular thing I did address with, with uh, one of the officials. But I'm trying to wait till I got a good, solid relationship with them. They can trust Reverend Jones. So when I come to them with something, they know Reverend Jones is not a person about frivolousness and I'm very serious at what I'm doing. So my approach is give me another one, another two or three meetings, and um, and then 
I could uh, start talking about specifics. That's the plan. Okay. Thank you. Sir, sir, may I respectfully respond to that? Because when you say the, the NAACP, and I'm not trying to hold up the meeting, we have to move on, but the NAACP has been instrumental, if I take myself for an example, in supporting and in, uh, in, uh, supporting and going forward, um, advocating on behalf of matters in reference to the death of my daughter. You all have been there. There have been multiple uh, presidents before you. So when you tell me at this point, and we'll talk about this further, when I'm literally saying to everyone under the sound of my voice, that Chief Awad has her knee on my neck, literally, in the name of Jesus, if you want to go there, with my daughter's case. And it is a deliberate abuse of power right now in the presence of anybody that's ever lost a child. She has stopped. This, method, this thing has come to her door. She has stood up and she has said no. So I just want to put that on the record that I'm hoping that you will uh, reconsider um, this and uh, excuse me, I'm sorry about the phone, that you'll just give it some thought for further conversations that we won't have to wait two or three meetings. The respect for you and your position and the NAACP is already present. You brought with you in my observations, the way you handle things, that you are a force to be reckoned with when you speak. So that, that respect should already be there. And I don't think that it should take you two or three meetings to speak as you have, I've seen you doing, admired you doing that you get to the point. So again, I, I respectfully step back and allow the meeting to go forward, but to ask somebody to wait two or three meetings, when I've been in this fight for 10 years and Chief Awad has stood up and blocked it right now, all that's been done in my daughter's case and you all have been there, um, I'll be quiet, but I respectfully put that there for, for further consideration. Thank you for your patience and I pray I'm not out of order with this as we move forward as a community in uh, addressing these matters. Thank you for this time, sir. Thank you for your opinion, over Morris. I, I, I respect your opinion. And as I said, I did speak to her about the matter. But uh, thank you very much. And as I believe as a relationship gets better, I believe we can do some more things. I okay. have a question. What, what do you consider to be uh, the racial advancement, the advancement of the race? Do, does that include, uh, what does that include for you in terms of how to advance? Uh, what advancement means? And um, since we're going by the bylaws, uh, what do you consider advancement to mean and uh, how, what, the, what other aspects of, um, we talk about intersectionality, talk about uh, gender and class and all these other different issues. And we've heard issues around gender concerns with this branch and uh, in the NAACP in general. Do you consider that to be a part of your, uh, uh, moving forward and advancing, advancing the organization. Let me tell you what my thoughts are, and hopefully this will answer this question forever more, because I've heard some, something along these lines. <clears throat> my focus is not gender. My focus is not uh, sexual orientation. My focus is the charter goal of the NAACP to champion equal rights and elimination of racial prejudice and to advance the interests of colored people. In the areas of education, employment, legal rights, and legal rights and uh, voting rights. That's my focus. Sir. And so as I stay in line with the charter goals of the NAACP, I know I got the support of the Constitution and the bylaws. That's my focus. Sir. That's, that's really pretty much all I have to say on that. And in terms of political action, um, what do you consider to be uh, uh, how do you how do you seek to advance political action? Um, through the branch? Uh, is it through your meetings alone? Is it through just discussions with political uh, elected officials? I mean, Democrats specifically, uh, do you have other ways that you plan on engaging the branch um, in, in regards to the membership being politically active? Of course I do, sir. But as I said to you, my focus is the charter goals at the WCP. There are various ways we can do that. Um, don't ever put Reverend Jones in a box. We're getting to know one another. People don't really know Reverend Jones. Don't put me in a box. Whatever I can do to accomplish the charter goals of the NAACP, that's what I will use, sir. There's no one particular method or one particular way. I'm open to, to effectively reach our goals. And my meetings with these officials, I believe, is a first major step to make sure they're comfortable when I come in and talk to them. And I believe that's that's the first step of me trying to accomplish all those. So I, 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 any method that will be effective in that regard, I will use. Okay. Also, we have a question. Do, I'm yes, sorry. Another question. Reverend uh, Morris, Reverend Morris, who is it? 
It's Reverend Morris again. Um, you know, I really, uh, I'm, I, I really pray that uh, I want us to be able to, to obviously work forward as, as a unit and address these things. And we're, I just want you to know, and maybe I'm out of order, please God forgive me, Reverend Morris, but just a couple of things that are really, when we talk about the advancement and where we stand as a people. And these are a couple of things that are actually brewing right now with our, see, we can't wait is what I want to stress to you, sir. Okay, and, very much. And, excuse, me, excuse me for cutting you off. Oh, could you, I'm gonna give you one minute so we want, we want to move all on. All right, I'll, 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 take, I'll take the one minute. Right Thank now, you. right now with our police, and everyone hear me, I don't want to shock you. Right now we have the issue with the police department of the, the, oh God, what is the word? The, the, what I've been saying for the last few years, the uh, roadside cavity searches. And someone called me yesterday from the DOJ and said, you need to make that plain. That's putting a finger up somebody's ASS and they've been doing that to our black and brown persons. Okay, this is no joke. This is verified by former state's attorney. That's probably 30 of my seconds. The second thing we have brewing in our community right now is we just looked at the person that got officer of the year for the most traffic stops. They got officer of the year. They issued 1,700. This is just, and I just verified this the last two days. They issued 1,700 citations in Anne Arundel County. 78% of those citations were to black and brown persons when we only represent 19.2% of the population. We have got to talk. We have got to move forward as an agency. And I just want you and the NAACP to be abreast of what's coming so you're not left out as we build our relationships. <clears throat> Thank you very much for my minute. God bless you and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Morris. I did have another question about uh, how you can, whether you consider sexual orientation to be uh, a part of the advancement of Black people. You say you don't want to focus on gender. You don't consider gender and sexual orientation to be part of the advancement. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's not my focus. My focus is the charter goals of the NAACP and to do what we need to do to reach that, brother. That's that's my that's my position. I don't really have anything else to add to that, sir. Okay, so let's proceed, brothers and sisters. If we can. Um, I'm sorry, I can't do this reactive thing in terms of the emoji, but you know, I find that statement offensive okay. because gender and sexual orientation is included in anybody's racial advancement, okay. anybody's. And that is part of the NAACP <laughs> on a national level. That is being attended to on a national level. Now, okay. this branch is too important to this county to ignore certain things. And these are the things that lead to lawsuits. And okay. we don't need that. Okay. No so, we say ignore, I'm ignoring anything. I said, okay, I'm thank you for sharing. Thank you, because basis. that's what it sounded like. Yeah, it okay. sounded can I, like that. Can I, can I make a okay. quick quick statement, quick okay. recommendation? Okay. Uh, I should take less than a minute. Okay. Um, based on my corporate background, whenever you have a new leader in place, he or she uh, would have what they would call as office hours. So I'm just making this as a suggestion, Reverend Jones. Uh, maybe consider having specified times throughout the month in a Zoom session that we'll consider as an office hour where members of this organization, if they have an open-ended question for you, um, I would suggest you take the opportunity. Uh, it could be a one-on-one -on -one session, a group session, just to allow them to get more familiar with. Obviously, we don't have the chance to do it at this time because we have business to do, Right. but I would advise you to please take that under consideration as you're uh, again, trying to make sure you're familiar with not only me, but everyone in the branch to understand what your position as far as leading this organization. Gotcha, just sir. a recommendation. Gotcha. It's up for you to choose to do that. I'm going to certainly consider that, sir. Okay, at this point here, what I would like to do is I would like to go to the uh, the report of the second vice president, Mr. Steve Waddy. If you'd be so kind, of, please try to keep it to five minutes if you don't mind, sir. The time is kind of moving here. So, Mr. Steve Waddy, at this time. Okay. Um... As you all can see, I uh, did testify a couple of days ago um, at the Senate on, uh, on police accountability boards, giving them the investigatory powers to be able to um, investigate police misconduct. And uh, that was a, it's been a major concern for this branch, as well as the, um, the state conference uh since police reform was passed 
Uh, I did see President Flowers there testified on a bill prior to me about uh, giving the Attorney General powers to investigate uh, and prosecute. And it's a bill that we support as well uh, to prosecute um, officers that may commit uh, uh, that where death is in custody. Uh, the challenge in bold of collusion. Yeah, yeah, the challenge in bold. Right. So, a couple hours after that, we had our bill. Um, it's a bill that we're working on in coalition with uh, the ACLU, um, various other organizations. It's about it's a 70 organization coalition that. I'm the NAACP representative on at the state level. And so I was able to testify on behalf of the branch uh, at that hearing. And uh, it, I had a good colloquy with uh, Senator Muse from uh, Prince George's County to discuss some of the issues, especially around the Fraternal Order of Police and their relationship with, uh, with Black communities and how they describe the Black community. Um, and uh, and their desire for uh, maintaining a certain their certain interests. Um, so that was a that was a really fun. Reverend Morris was there. Uh, Linda Davis was there, and other members of the branch were there. So we had a, a really interesting conversation. Uh, it was a great it was a great time in the Senate JPR. And uh, I, if you join the political action committee, we did talk about it. Um, we have mentioned that bill. I've been sending out weekly updates on what's going on uh, at the state legislature as well. Um, I've been attending the statewide equity meetings that um, Carl Snowden has been hosting. Uh, those equity meetings, as you all have heard from our various uh, my updates, the statewide equity meeting started from the media equity that started two years ago. Uh, we met with um, we met with TV stations, newspapers, radio stations from around the um, around the state, mostly in the Baltimore metro area. Um, elected officials participated. Jasper Pena Melnick included in that at the beginning, and so we've been ever since then. We've met every Monday, and those Monday meetings have been impactful and powerful, and they've kind of expanded the size of the media realm. Um, as you can see, if you scroll down a bit on my report, I did have some action items. Um, the action items that I had were that we would uh, have a parliamentarian. Um, we, uh, after our last meeting, did hear some uh, members spoke to me about their concerns about having uh, one, basically an all male um, uh, board and that they were concerned about that. Uh, I too am concerned about that. I know I have internalized uh, patriarchy and misogyny and I try to set up systems to be able to address how I would um, mitigate my own issues, that my own blind spots. And so one of them is to make sure that I have proper protocols in place to be able to address my own blind spots. Um, and one of those ways is to make sure that I have that we have, uh, I think here in the NAACP to address our blind spots is to have a, uh, a parliamentarian that, um, that will help us move a meeting along, record meeting minutes, um, and be able to conduct meetings uh, in a business-like manner um, that will be able to uh, provide us with the type of um, the, product, the product, productivity that will keep everyone engaged uh, and, and be able to you know, mitigate any blind spots that we might have. Um, and the executive committee did vote on having a parliamentarian um, and it, she was approved, well, the position was approved. However, um, following the meeting, uh, we did hear that from Reverend Jones that the bylaws uh, we would have to have the president appoint a parliamentarian uh, to be able to have a parliamentarian on the executive committee. Um, as I stated, it was uh, it, the goal is to be able to have someone that can mitigate 
our our blind spots and make sure that we address some of the concerns that we've had regard and we've heard especially you know from our first previous <laughs> first vice president regarding these issues. Um, uh, I don't know whether or not Reverend Jones has decided that he wants to um, agree with having a parliamentarian. Um, I, you know, so I have, you did mention the bylaws situation. I don't know whether or not that's something that's still on your mind, but we did approve to have uh, President also President Jones participated in the discussion around that vote, um, but abstained from voting. Uh, and, you know, we did have an opportunity to have that discussion and hopefully, you know, he will uh, provide that position um, if we are to go by the bylaws. Uh, second, uh, we did decide to uh, uh, address appointing um, former President Emeritus also as a parliamentarian uh, to be able to make sure that we have this type of uh, a relationship. And that also passed. Uh, after that, we discussed, if you can see, uh, having a board retreat so that we can discuss some of our internal and external issues, uh, how we communicate, how we move forward, what our agendas will be, um, what, you know, what expectations are. Um, and following that, uh, we did approve having a board retreat and at the board retreat, again, to mitigate some of our concerns around sexism and, and misogyny, we want to be able to have a, a process put in place where we would have an um, a individual with uh, uh, implicit bias training. So we want to be able to have implicit bias training to deal with that and uh, uh, make sure that we address some of those concerns as well. Um, those were my action items that I put in place that are, and that was voted on and approved as well by the executive committee um, in order to address some of these concerns that uh, membership have brought to us that we want to respond to our membership and not leave people um, just by the wayside, especially when we already have a legacy and history here in the NAACP of uh, being uh, extremely sexist. Um, from the beginning. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the people who I view as a leader for my life has been uh, Ida B. Wells, and she also was a uh, founding member. My great-grandfather was a founding member of the NAACP, and I want to make sure that his legacy is, is properly recorded, um, and that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring those items up and keep moving forward and advancing the cause of uh, racial justice for all people. Um, in, in, in America. Thank you. Thank you for your poll, Mr. Body. Uh, unless there's some questions, we're going to go to the uh, poll for the second vice president, Mr. Downing. Let's see any questions. Okay. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Quick question. Yes, sir. I believe it's Article 6 in the bylaw that talks about officer. Um, and in that um, article, it doesn't mention anything about gender, it just mentions the officer. So I think, um, again, I, I agree with what you're saying, but maybe. If we look at that, and maybe that needs to be revised, but currently it just states which officer that doesn't talk about any of them having to be a male, female, or other. Um, and so, again, great point. Um, and I noticed that as well. Um, and so, um, you know, maybe that's something that we need to look at. Um, that, um, president, first vice, and second. Um, at least, uh, you know, there should be um, diversity there. Um, but What's again, your name, sir? Reverend James. Reverend James, I totally agree with you, and I definitely think that the NAACP would benefit from having uh, a, a quota system to be able to address the fact that, uh, you know, it's possible that there will be all male leadership, and I definitely think we should. I'm in favor of quotas, personally, um, and so I, I definitely think we need to make sure we have a secured a spot to make sure that there's gender and even sexual <laughs> orientation diversity uh, amongst the oldest, boldest uh, civil rights organization in America. And I think, you know, we have the largest membership and we have a legacy, as Reverend Jones has mentioned many times previously, of being there for organizations and people that, uh, 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 you know, different sexual orientation, and, uh, gender as well. So we want to make that, make sure that we, and in this branch, I uh, have the same, I, I don't necessarily think that the bylaws 
need to be amended to address uh, gender specifically uh, because we as an organization uh, of people in our own community can make decisions as neighbors and, and family and, and without having to resort to uh, constantly addressing um, a charter and, and bylaws that uh, can, are written so generally that you can move within them. Um, there's an opportunity to move within the bylaws and not be hampered by them uh, because it's a living bylaw, it's a living constitution. It's not something that's stuck in, you know, 1935, 1912, 1909. Um, and so it's, it's, it's moved on. And even the people in 1909 were a little bit more progressive than the people in 1950, uh, as, you know, many of us know. Uh, Representative, that's a sufficient answer for you? Yes. Yeah. I see. Okay. All right. At this point, we're ready to go to the uh, second vice president, Mr. Downing? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, in person and online. Uh, the only uh, report item that I have is that uh, this year will be the fourth annual Minority Money Matters event. Uh, some of you may ask, well, why is he bringing that up? So when the first event was established, the MAACP was a member of that event. That event is essentially a, a financial information seminar for members in the community. Uh, we initially started the event at the Anne Arundel County Community College. Uh, since February is Black History Month, uh, with my association with uh, one of the uh, small businesses, woman-owned businesses in the county, Work-Life uh, Behavioral Health, uh, which is a mental health business, uh, they approached me four years ago to establish a partnership to have a, uh, a business slash seminar event that we would provide financial literacy to members in the community. So since that time, we started in person. Uh, since COVID, uh, we met virtually for the past two years. So this year, we are returning back in person for our fourth annual event. Uh, with this event, um, some of the seminar sessions that will be presented, uh, we'll have someone that will talk about college saving strategies. Uh, we'll have presenters that will talk about entrepreneurship. Uh, we'll also have uh, an attorney there uh, that will talk about estate planning. Uh, we'll also have, uh, uh, this year we've added a, uh, a presenter is gonna talk about if you have a small business and if you're looking to get into government contracting, she will kind of teach you the strategies on how to go about that process. Uh, we also have actually a member of the NAACP who actually was our business of the year winner, Ms. Vanessa Bright. She will be giving a presentation on if you're looking to start a nonprofit business. She will give you a kind of a toolkit or a presentation on how to go about doing that process. Uh, so the reason why that I am uh, so uh, connected to this event uh, is because, again, I was one of the original co-founders of the event. But also, I thank the NWACP on being a sponsor of this year's event, meaning that we will have a table at the event in which uh, Brother Ralph Thomas will be there to not only to do uh, voter registration, but we'll also have a membership table there as well. As well, Going back to the original charter statement that, uh, I mean, the bylaw statement that Reverend Jones spoke about, mm -hmm. socioeconomic improvement for our community, uh, this event will definitely uh, cover uh, those aspects that we as the NAACP is encourage our members of our community to support. Also at the event, there'll be other small business vendors there who will have the opportunity to talk about the businesses and the work that they're doing here in our in our county. So again, this event is next Saturday, February 25th. The time is 12 p.m. Uh, to 4 p.m. Location will be the Anne Arundel County Community College. Um, we will have uh, some slight refreshments. We were able to uh, get a, a corporate sponsor uh, to uh, provide funding for that event. Uh, the only financial obligation that the NAACP will have is that uh, the table space that we will have is uh, $50, which that will be uh, donated uh, as well. So essentially no funds will come out of the NAACP's pocket to be a participant in the event, uh, just only Brother Ralph, and I believe he has some volunteers uh, that will support that event. Uh, 
So yeah, I'm still seeking volunteers. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you had the. Uh... I had one other person. If anyone wants to sign up to work the table, we have a sign up list over there or contact me by email. Yes. I, I will not turn you down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, uh, going back to um, you know, the gender state, the beautiful thing about uh, the event uh, next week is that over 90% of the presenters are African American females. All right. So there's only one male that's going to be uh, participating, I think one or two. Uh, but again, it just shows that we, even though our board may not be reflective, but the efforts that we're support, we definitely are empowering uh, women in our community and whatever in business endeavors that they have. So uh, that concludes my report. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Mr. Is it, um, how much is that event? Oh. My, my apologies. So the <laughs> event is free to the public. Okay. All right. If you are a business looking to uh, set up a table, uh, the cost is the $75. I'll have, uh, uh, if, with the permissions of uh, President Jones, to have uh, Secretary Richardson send out the flyer to our membership. Uh, that way, everyone will have that in their electronic email box. Okay. Sister Richardson, you have Reverend Jones' uh, uh, permission to do that. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Downing. Also, uh, for, for, yes, thank you, Mr. Downing, for, for making reference to the purpose and aims of the branches, Article 2.1c, as I mentioned earlier. I appreciate you making reference to that, sir. Thank you very much. That's what I'm in tune to. Okay, you may ask your question. Yeah. yeah thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, Second Vice President, for coming down for the thorough report. Will you please follow up with some of the um, resources mm -hmm. that gave there and kind of addendum on how that? Some of us may not be able to attend. Yes. And also, Mr. Thomas, if we don't get any volunteers by Thursday, reach back out to us to see if we can kind of tweak any time okay. that um so we can all we can't always be present, but yes. we can show up in different increments. Yes. 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 All right. I believe uh Mr. Wadi, you had a question? No. Oh, okay. Is it interested any hands are raised for a question for Mr. Downey? We do not have any hands raised. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Dunning, for, for your final report. Uh, Treasurer, Mr. Thomas, y'all, and can I say before we get started, we had a chance to go over all the bank, bank records, all the paperwork, all the money that's been spent, all the money that's come in, and he's on his he's on his game doing a wonderful job. Mr. Mr. Thomas, go ahead and say what you report. I think you see the report in front of you. Yeah. This is a bank account as of reconciled as of January 31st, 2023. Beginning of the month, we had 43,000. $340.69 in our account. We had receipts of $1,685.26, which I have to report that includes 39 new members. Mm. We picked up 39 new members. Out of that 39 new members, I think we had about five, um, mm. pass that down. Mm -hmm. Let me we had five life memberships. Mm. So January was a very, very good month for memberships. Disbursements, it's $1,772.06. End of the month, at Bank Book Reconciliation revealed we have $43,253.39. That's 4325339 in our checking account. Wonderful, Mr. Thomas. Thank you for your report. Everything is in order. Uh, brothers, this is myself, Sister Roman, and, and Sister. Uh, Need Need we all went through all the records in detail, and everything is reconciled and in order. So thank you, Mr. Thomas. I'm assuming it any. Are there no reports of Mr. Thomas? We're going to move right along here. I see. We're going to be emphasized about the next Saturday. If you want to volunteer, just look at the table. Yeah, we go to registration. Please contact me. What, what's that date again for money management? 25th. 25th. And it's only 12 to 4. So what's that? Four hours, five hours? Yeah, four hours. It's, it's not a long day of Yeah. We're going to devote a couple of hours. Yeah. Okay. Which campus? It's at the Anne Arundel County Community College and also the uh, Which free campus? campus. Oh, main campus Arnold. Um, my apologies. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, also, the uh, sessions are like 30 minute block sessions. So, I have a quick question. So, in order to participate during the voter registration drive, do you have to uh, have completed the voter registration no. training? No. 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 I've, I've completed it. I teach it. So, okay. So, there are no other questions. We can proceed to the at this point, we, we do not have assistance, but a secretary. Oh, Sister Richardson, do you have a report today? Um, I do not, but I have a couple things I can talk about. So um, I'll make it short. 
Um, I just want to tell everyone thank you for um, pretty much just being okay with me getting used to this new role and transitioning in. I still have a lot to learn. Um, there's still a lot that needs to be done. I'm currently working with Monique. She's been extremely patient with me during this transition process. And um, we're currently working on the BASH report. And this month I helped Mr. Um, Jones, well, Dr. Jones with the um, his new business cards. And I'm currently working on getting the BASH report submitted to the national database. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. And also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've asked the secretary to uh, to adjust her personal schedule to start showing up physically at times. <clears throat> she works on Saturdays, and she's willing to do that to sit and show up a few times so we can let, let her see. I believe these should, should be seen every now and then. And she's honoring my request, and I appreciate it. Uh, Sister Richardson, really appreciate that. Uh, so people can get a chance just to see you. And so thank you very much for honoring my request on that. Okay, yeah. there are no questions for the secretary. Uh, let's proceed. Um, we're going to, if you look at Sister Secretary, that's not youth and college division president. We don't have that. So we're going to go to number six, reports of committees right here at Seoul. It's vacant at present, but I do want everybody to know that I, I, I've considered somebody for that position. And uh, I'll give more details about the next executive board meeting, but somebody I believe will fulfill that position magnificently and we'll talk about it so I can get the uh, support of the executive board. <laughs> Armed Services and Veteran, Veterans Affairs. Uh, do we have Mr. Curtis Jones online, Ms. Richardson or Reverend Tillett? Yes, I'm online. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, sir. You got a report for us? I don't have a written report, but I can give you some information and I can get, get it all put in writing. So the next time I will send it to the secretary. But the information we have right now is May the 3rd in Howard County, there are there is a veterans symposium going on. It will take place. And what that is about is getting veterans to register for health care and also to, to um, complete claims. Also in July, upcoming July 22nd, we're going to have the same thing going on here in Arnold County at the Arnold County Community College in Arnold. And also, one thing that, and I've been, I've been listening to everything, but and I'll say my comments for myself and I'll put them in writing later on, but the veterans of this county, there are 50,000 plus veterans in Anona County, and there are over 7,000 minority veterans. And the veterans themselves have not actually, they don't trust the VA. And the reason they don't trust the VA is because for many years they've been slighted, they've been put aside. And that's not just minority veterans, that's veterans as a whole. And what I do is I support any veteran out there. And when I go to different meetings, I wear several hats. And one of my hats is the guy from the NAACP. And I speak to the hospital and I speak to different veterans. And so to me, when it comes down to a veteran a veteran is a veteran regardless of the color of their, their skin. And, and I believe that the NWCB, when it said, for the advancement, the associate, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, all people have colors. And I'm just going to stand by that. So I will help anybody, anywhere, at any time. So that's, that's my report. There's more involved, but I have to write it all up. And I ask that you forgive me but not always sending in a written report because I'm doing something every day. And that's including Saturdays and Sundays, going traveling to and from different areas of the county, helping veterans out. So unfortunately, that's why you don't see reports from me in writing because I'm too busy doing things to stop and write them down at that moment because I can lose things by, I can lose people if I stop and write down reports about everything I do. And one person that can verify that is um, the former president, Jack Long also, because when I sit at the American Legion, I'm constantly on the phone, people coming in, and I'm helping people with their benefits. Understand, understand. Uh, so Mr. That, Jones, that's all I have. Thank you very much for your report, but Reverend Jones is asking you, sir, to please put something in writing for me, even if it's a summary, 
Uh, I, I depend extremely heavily on what's in writing. So if, it's, if you could give me a summary maybe or something, you don't have to, not every single thing you're doing, but if you can give me a summary, one page summary, I would really, really appreciate that, sir, because I really depend heavily on the reports in writing. So if there's not too much to ask, I would appreciate you honoring that request. Is that okay, sir? Roger that. Thank you. I appreciate it, uh, Mr. Jones. Any questions for Mr. Jones, Veterans Affairs? Okay. I have All a right. comment. This is Reverend Morris. Yes, Reverend Morris. Hey, I have a comment. Um, I was listening to what he said, and I just want to say, uh, and maybe he can report on this when he comes back. He's right about being so uh, instrumental in, in veterans' uh, lives, and veterans are very important to this community. And I understand that possibly um, veteran services may be moving back to county. And I think that in the future, if the if, and that's an if that should happen, that um, it will affect the veterans because they have built relationships with and he just said they don't trust the VA. They may not trust the county government, et cetera, et cetera. But just for us to be aware of that as a community, that if we object to that or maybe want to find out more information, that the services to the veterans remain with people that care and know what it is to be a veteran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Jones, I'm assuming that if something is coming to the county, you would get wind of that. And if you do, if you don't mind putting that in writing in your next report, uh, I would appreciate that, sir, okay? Yes, and I'm actually... Uh... One of the individuals they've asked to help develop that office oh, great, great. from the actual um, Commission of Veterans Affairs for the county, because I'm a commissioner on that. I am a county commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Just keep, keep us informed and put in a little summary for me, if you don't mind, in writing, okay? Roger that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, next we're going to go to uh, Climate Justice, uh, Climate Justice Chair. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. I apologize, I had to leave our executive committee meeting early on Wednesday, but I did have an action item that I would like to read and just get some um, like feedback on in terms of whether or not we can do it. So my action item is related to this 50 year old build, bill that's called the Maryland Environmentally, Environmental, sorry, I can't talk this morning. Policy Act. It's 50 years old. And what's happening is that it has never been acted on in its full capacity. So during this legislative session, you know, folks who have supported this bill for a number of years would like it to get some teeth because it impacts us all. It's about having a human right to a healthy environment. And we know that the frontline communities in our county have been just um, bombarded with disparities around health and clean water, clean air, et cetera. So all I was asking is that we could sign off in support of this bill coming to its full fruition that will you know, impact us all and make it better for everybody. So what I've included is just a list of those who have already signed off on it in terms of supporting it, that the legislation be passed so that it can be a bill that has teeth in it. Because right now it doesn't have all the teeth that it needs. It has baby teeth, but it doesn't have adult teeth. Dr. Garrett, thank you very much. I had a chance to read your report and that was very informative. I didn't know about that 50-year-old law. So thank you for your report. I really appreciate that. Um, of course, if, do you have the, the actual, I guess, uh, the, the information about how I can find a law? I would like to take a look at it. Do you have that information? If you Google MEPA at 50, you can see everything that is said about the law. So you would just need to Google that. Um, yeah. I can send you, you know, the information from the, the person, Nina Cardin, that is actually heading up the legis, you know, behind it getting um, acted upon more, more robustly. So I can just forward her information. But if you just Google it, you'll see what okay, the Garrett, law is in the history. Yeah, so what they're asking really is for this branch <clears throat> to be in support of it. And if we are, then there's just a form that we would need to fill out 
and submit a Google form. Okay, okay. thank you very much for that, um, Dr. Gary. I, I will Google it, so I want to take a look at it. Uh, I like to read these things while I sign on to them, but let me take a look at it and I'll get to it, I promise you, before the week is out uh, next week. And uh, I can't see any reason why we wouldn't support that. But I just right. want to look at things if you don't mind. I appreciate it. Oh, thank no, you for your report, too. I didn't know about that. Thank you for your report. Actually, you're welcome. So I actually just put the link in the chat and it also has the ability to sign the petition inside the link. It also oh, has the resolution listed at the bottom if anyone wants to take a look at it. Wonderful, Ms. Richardson. Wonderful job. Thank you very much for that. Are there any questions for Dr. Garrett from anybody? Uh, online, Ms. Richardson, any hands are raised? No, sir, no hands. I see. Thank you, Dr. Garrett, for that fine report. I really appreciate that, that written report. It really helped me out there. Okay. Okay. And thank you, Ms. Richardson. That was wonderful. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, so community coordination. Do we have, um, let's see, Sky Bailey, is she on, Ms. Richardson? I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you loud, loud and clear, Ms. Bailey? Thank you. All right, great. Hello, family. Um, so listening to the bylaws uh, that Reverend Jones mentioned, the three things I pulled out uh, that we need to improve, educate, and make aware. So I'm going to go by those three things as I give my report today. Thank so you. starting Thank with, <laughs> so starting with the first one, improve. Um, and I think that's so appropriate based on what we were talking today about um, the topic of um, uh, sex and gender. Uh, that's the first thing on my uh, report. So the article that I found, guys, is not uh, gender neutral. Let's stop using it like it is. And that's something I've been working on for the past two years, trying not to say the word guys. And I mean, and when you think about just um, how funny it sounds when you're uh, addressing a group of women and you're like, okay, guys, it's like, really, it's not even right. <laughs> but um if you take a look at that uh, article, uh, it's so good. And it lists a couple of things in there that you can uh, use as substitutes. For example, um, you all, you can say everyone, people, team. And as you see, when I come on, I say, hello, family. <laughs> um, so take a look at the uh, at that uh, article. It's a great read. Uh, then the second thing mentioned in the bylaw, so educate. Um, this came in after my report, so I did put it in the link, and I'm just going to mention this here. So African American History and Heritage um, is a listing that is out on the Anna, Anne Arundel uh, County website. Um, instead of reading the link, it is listed in my link tree um, that you see right there at the bottom. And for those who are not online, I'll say it out. And that brings me to my third topic, the... Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the third point, make aware from the bylaw. So you can always use the link tree and be made aware of the events that are going on in the, in the um, community. So for everyone that cannot see this, I don't know what's going on there in public, if you could actually see this on the screen. Um, but well, before I read it out, can everybody see this that's there? No, you got to see it. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem. So um, it's you just go to HTTPS and you know, you don't necessarily have to do that, but if you just wanna just uh, Google, or I'm sorry, just type in the URL link tree and that's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. Again, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E forward slash community coordination committee. That's all one word, no gaps, no underscores or anything. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E forward slash community coordination committee. I've been doing that for a while now. You can always go there and find out all of the uh, events that are going on um, from Maryland, Virginia, um, DC. Um, I love the way um, Linda Davis uh, helps me out. I get uh, the majority of my stuff from her uh, listserv. Uh, there's extra information on there, articles that I come across, uh, for example, the one that I just mentioned. Uh, so please take a look at that. And uh, also, as you can see in the report, there's also the Save the Date for the Annapolis Pride event that's coming up uh, June 3rd. Uh, I was hoping to be there in public. Unfortunately, I could not make it because I definitely want to um, show everybody this sample of the T-shirt, the blue T-shirt that I would love to um, get approved. So that'll have to wait till next month. Uh, and then Linda will be up, but do, does anybody have any questions? Any questions for, uh, any questions for Ms. Bailey? Any questions? Ms. Richardson, any questions uh, for Ms. Bailey? No, no questions. I see, okay. Thank you, Ms. Bailey, for a fine report. Appreciate it. No problem, thank you. Okay, great. 
All so right, I can so the act coordination. I think it's Miss Linda Davis. Act coordination. Yes, great. Good. Good morning, family. Thank good you, morning. everyone. So for the uh, act coordination, uh, there was a listening session on Thursday, and they are kicking off their listening campaign to listen to find out issues around the county. So if anyone would like to participate in a listening session with with me and others, just to let them know what our issues are, that would be great. Let me know. So um, Stephen Wadi and I did meet with um, the act organizer as well as um, Pastor Tillette. And we, at the executive committee, we agreed to um, recommend that ACT uh, implement the following recommendations by July 10th. And those you can see on the screen, the people online. Um, we would like them to organize an effective action with the residents at Woodside Gardens, take action during the 2023 legislative session, present their housing agenda to our executive committee, demonstrate that ACT has um, really implementing their um, inclusion, diversity, equity, and anti-racism initi anti initiatives. And we would like them to join the Coalition for Police Accountability as well as the Maryland Coalition for Justice and Police Accountability. And we'd like them to do this by July 10th, 2023. And if they don't, we will probably have to leave because we wouldn't have done those recommendations as well as there were some concerns we had that they did not um, join with the NAACP about the new fair housing law, as well as um, in the, they did not join the Police Accountability Coalition. So we're hoping they make those recommendations and um, Stephen and I will be letting them know that we would like them to make these recommendations and um, I will keep the branch posted on what they say. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful report, Ms. David. I did read your, your written report too about uh, making sure they're on the same page with us if they want our support. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any questions for Ms. Linda Davis? Any questions for Ms. Richardson online? No, there are no questions. And Ms. Linda actually included the link in the um, chat to join the Zoom kickoff. I see, okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for your report. You're welcome, next, thank you. Next, criminal justice, if you if everyone remember from, from my report earlier, I was sharing with you how I actually did meet with Dana Mulhauser, and she's the she's the lady who is the chief of independent investigations divisions of the Office of the Attorney General, Ms. Dana Mulhauser, and they're the ones who who are trying to get this law passed. Mr. Wilder made reference to earlier, in which the when you have police involved fatalities, that the state's attorney will be able to prosecute. Attorney General. Yeah, the, the Attorney General for, for the state uh, Attorney General, they will be able to prosecute. In those type of cases right now they can't do that on the, the law doesn't allow them to do that so of course we all in favor of that because if you recall we've had um i, be I believe it was ohio where the state's attorney did the prosecution because the local attorney uh he was kind of dragging his feet with that thing and so they jumped in and did a wonderful job and so this is just a great law but my understanding is that the hearing is really kind of contentious very contentious and so, <laughs> and so, it, and so i'm assuming probably the uh I would be a bit surprised if the, if the uh, police, the FOP, FOP yeah, turn over police was opposed to it because it gives us an opportunity, I believe, to have more more objectivity. Uh, and the attorney general, can I say, uh, handled himself very well in advocating to receive the power, mm -hmm. um, and he he was questioned for forty minutes. Our new attorney attorney general Anthony Brown, mm. and um, he defended his office. Very well. Uh, and Anne Arundel County has had uh, two cases, one that's currently under investigation and one that has already been investigated regarding police involved shootings. Um, and, uh, and those cases weren't brought up in the hearing. They did bring up cases on Baltimore City, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, it, was, it, was, it was an interesting dynamic in there. So it was it was a good it was a good you know round you know round every the energy was high <laughs> energy was high in the room you so. certainly want to support more objectivity you certainly want to support more objectivity I think the great mm -hmm. bill I had a chance to talk to the representative Dana Mohaus at the state conference she was there and he really feels strongly about this and I think it's a magnificent idea to get as much objectivity when you have police involved fatalities as, as possible yes, as much right. of that as we can. In any event, so that's all I have to share from um, as the criminal justice, juvenile justice, Miss Miss Ellis Johnson. Is she on, Miss Richardson? 
No, she is not. I see. Okay. Yes, 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 I'm here, but I have no report. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for letting us hear your voice. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I'm just trying to get over some a little cold, but thank you. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, economic development, Mr. Antonio Downey and Ms. CJ Musha. Uh, if C is CJ on. I'll uh, speak on her behalf very quickly. No. So, so the uh, Economic uh, Empowerment Committee uh, met on uh, this past February 7th. Um, the topic of our discussion was on uh, uh, housing issues involved in housing. Um, we did have a guest uh, join us. Uh, First Vice President Stephen Waddy uh, joined us. Uh, why are you laughing, uh, Mr. Waddy? Because you are a guest. He's supposed to have a, 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 another guest. He said he did, it didn't make it on his calendar, unfortunately. You, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, also, as another guest, we were supposed to have the Arlington County uh, president to join us uh, in our meeting uh, simply because the Arlington branch uh, wrote a uh, opinion on Stephen. Elaborate. Uh, the Ar Arlington County is revising its housing zoning code and to address the issue of the missing middle. And it's been a, a debate over the past year regarding the missing middle, which is a uh, property that is quadplexes, triplexes, sixplexes, and uh, eightplexes. And uh, Anne Arundel County will be addressing that in the upcoming, has been addressing that since Stuart Pittman came into office, but we'll be addressing it a little bit more in the next six to 12 months. And Arlington County NAACP under its leader, Mike Heminger, who is a housing commissioner, Arlington County created a racial justice housing toolkit. And so we wanted to be able to have that toolkit in our toolkit to be able to uh, advocate before the county council. And Annapolis itself has just addressed their missing middle uh, legislation as well, with, with uh, previously mentioned Dewan Gay. Yeah. Um, and so we wanted to be able to have uh, the, the suggestions and language and get our voice together uh, to be able to advocate um, for racial justice and housing, uh, you know, from an NAACP standpoint uh, at the, at, before the County Council. Um, and we did participate in the social justice Movie night with Asha Smith and uh, the uh, and the uh, housing committee. What, what is it? The Human Relations Committee. Yeah, Human Relations, yeah. uh, where they also talked a little bit about that. So things are revving up for for that, and the Economic Empowerment Committee is going to be greatly involved in addressing uh, housing issues, <clears throat> as well as you know Reverend Jones and everyone here that we can to be able to advocate on behalf of increasing the lowering the cost of housing. We had a great discussion yesterday with the sheriff about evictions and the lack of affordable housing causing evictions. Uh, so that was, he, he, he addressed some things. So it's constantly in every conversation. I'm sure you've had other conversations as well, but you know, it's been, it's been a major issue. We wanted to hear from Arlington County. Uh, I don't know if people know, but the Pentagon is built on a black neighborhood. The, where the Pentagon is built used to be Robert E. Lee's plantation. And then after the Civil War, it became a refuge, slave, ex-slave refugee camp. And that turned into a town, which eventually became a black neighborhood, black town. And then it was condemned, taken over by the federal government, and the Pentagon was built on top of it. And so that level of, they have that, that's their experience that they talk about in their racial justice housing toolkit. Um, and so it's something that we definitely need to hear and learn from. And it'd be great for our branch to be able to hear from uh, Mr. Heminger. And also, you know, Arlington County lost their previous president uh, in a shooting down in the Dominican Republic. So we wanted to offer him some uh, condolences as well. I heard about that. I heard about that. Yeah. Any more, Mr. Yeah. Uh, first, he was, uh, first, vice. First, first vice. First vice. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I would like to add on behalf of the Economic Empowerment Committee. Um, over the past three years, we have participated in an event uh, with uh, uh, business owner Shea Cook. She's a part of our committee. Uh -huh. It's called a Tickle My Money Bone. 
Uh, that event will be happening on April 29th. And one of the requests that we will have is that the NAACP uh, be a sponsor of that event. Uh, we were a sponsor for the yes. since the inception of that event. And then uh, Reverend Jones just wanted to pass it along to you for information. Uh, we'll get the uh, sponsorship amount. Uh, but once we get that information, uh, we will send that to your way to get approval for sponsorship and also um, participation as well. Uh, also, uh, Chair Chairwoman uh, C.J. Mewshaw, uh, she has uh, been supporting that event as well. But more details will be forthcoming uh, once the fall. Full disclosure for that from last year, I was one of the dual prize winners. How much? Yeah. How much? I think I won a hundred bucks. No, no, how much? I don't know how much you won. How much we had to pay? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave two hundred. Two hundred. We won the bet. Sound like two hundred. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Just want to have some idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 I'm glad you won, brother. I want to ask about that. But also, like you said, uh, as the event uh, details uh, become more clear, we'll get that information sent out as well. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, that concludes the economic power. Okay. Any questions? Economic. Just to say I'm in favor of the tickle money bill. <laughs> All right, let me let me hear the final amount this year. <laughs> Take my view on it. Okay, any questions, Ms. Richardson, for Mr. Downey? Economic development, economic, excuse me, economic development. We do not. Okay, beautiful. Okay, at this point here, I want to proceed to education. I know Dr. Downey is not on because she called me this morning before I left. She's being honored. Uh, I told her send me the, the, the told her email me the event. But she she didn't get a chance to do it, but she's being honored. So I'm gonna find out from her exactly what she's being honored about. We can bring it up at the next meeting. But I know she's not present. And unless she designates somebody to give her a report, we're gonna move on. Is there, is there somebody, hold on, is there somebody designated by Dr. Dodona to give the education report of Ms. Ms. Richardson? Not that I'm aware of. I see, okay. I don't wanna I don't wanna take from whatever she wants to share. Let's, let's proceed here. Uh, any more on finance, Mr. Ralph Thomas? No, that would be. Okay, all right, I'm looking at uh, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thomas was pretty thorough when he came us. Right. I see, <laughs> we met, the finance committee met. Two of, two of you were together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ralph's been training me, so we met at his house last month and oh. did the report together. And, right. so. Are you going to start to hear money bells as well? <laughs> And I was in the, we, yeah. the three of us were, you know, when we were books to make sure everything was in order. I want everybody to know I'm paying attention to that. <laughs> when they called me, I tried to just my schedule to be there. And that was one of the things uh, Madam President Mary just told me, Judge, you got to be at the fun ass meeting. So I haven't missed it yet. So I'm going to try to make sure I'm at all of them to make sure everything's in order there. All right. So, Freedom Fund, Mr. Downey, anything you want to share about that? Uh, no formal report at this time. However, um, one of the things that we talked about when we conclude our last event is that we need to start searching for uh, potential guest speakers. And so um, as a part of my committee, uh, I owe a list of speakers that we will be going after. Uh, Reverend Morris is on our Freedom Fund Committee. So I'll send her a list of potential speakers to go after. So she will be very uh, beneficial in helping us get a good uh, speaker for this year's event, uh, which will happen on the third Friday in November, um, we'll give the actual location. Last year we added a, the double tree in Annapolis, uh, but we'll, as we get closer to the event, we'll uh, present more details. Okay, yeah. wonderful, sir. No questions, I'm assuming, about the future Freedom Fund banquet. Okay, Ms. Richardson, no questions, I'm assuming. If, if there's a question, Ms. Richardson, and I, please let me know, stop me, because if not, I'm gonna proceed on, because time is getting away from us, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to go to help Ms. Monroe. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everyone. In lieu of the health report that was sent to um, Tina Richardson, and also um, thank you for, first of all, President, thank you so much for the necessary verbiage that is needed to kind of steer us on what, you may, what we may be looking for and needed to put in that report. Thank you. So unnecessary things won't be put in and that can save time as we are in exactly. constructively. Yeah. So my report is follows. Um, there's a strengthening family event that will be taking place for the next 14 weeks. I said 13 because they had that one this past Thursday. I have a flyer here for it to be screenshot. It was also put in the report. So it says strengthening families, empowering families with opportunities 
for communication and parenting to improve family relationships. It started last Thursday, which was February the 16th. Be held every Thursday for the next 13 weeks, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And what better location than right here? <laughs> it's spearheaded through um, Kingdom Care Inc. And there's a phone number on the flyer, hmm. which was submitted if anyone had any questions. So I raised that. I bring that up so we can help do our part to let people know that great things are still happening in the community. We know when a family is thriving mentally, they thrive better in all other aspects. And thankfully, along with my report, we had a live speaker, so we made he made that even easier for me, which was Vinny DeMarco. And if anyone, I know we had some attendees that came a little late. I'm not going to repeat what he says because he did leave he did leave us with information. But he is um, an advocate and CEO of Maryland Healthcare for All, along with none other than my great friend, I'm Jonathan in the back. I'm also well. Um, I'm also part of that Maryland Healthcare for All. We want to continue pushing that as well. One more thing, he presented the bills that he is actually at the legislative in my report. There's also bills. He also asked us if we could participate in how to participate. So action item today is to follow up with the legislative bills that is actually on the floor. And I'll continue letting the committee know as a whole on where and when I will be participating in healthcare events. So if I can't come or can't stay, I would love for us to have the mindset of if you can't come, send your representative. And so that way, no matter what committee you are on, we can be in support um, of being there. We had um, just a quick agenda. I don't think I'm at my three minutes. I had the opportunity of going with um, attending the tour with um, President, First Vice President, yesterday at the courthouse with Everett Sesker. If he does it again, I would behoove you all to be able to take that tour. What you see on the outside is nothing in comparison to the tour that you will get and also the informational pieces that you will get. They are at a desperate, don't quote me, this is just my intake. They're at a desperate need for a financial boost that can be done from the county. And there are ways that we can actually fight for the sheriff department um, to get staffing and financial. They're also going to work on volunteerism. And Wadi, um, first vice president Wadi spoke about eviction. I won't go on by that because that's a long topic. Right. And I know the president, we're going to do our best and I'll be a part of what we will do to assist any residents that may be under that particular um, that particular strain. So thank you all. That concludes my report. I think I held another three minutes. <laughs> I always call it right. mail or text. Good job. We had, uh, thank you for your report, uh, Mr. Monroe. Had a good meeting with Sust uh, uh, Everett Sesker on yesterday. As a matter of fact, that's going to be added to our legislative agenda when we meet the delegates. They got to get some more money to the share. And as an attorney in the courthouse, I didn't really know he had short staff. Got me thinking differently now when I go in that courthouse. But if something pops off, then you got enough people, it seems like, to attend to everything. And so we would, that would put our legislative agenda to bring it up. Yes. They are, he is having a fundraiser this Friday. I will get the flyer and post it and send it to yes. the okay. secretary. They're having a fundraiser this um this Friday coming up. Oh, you can't okay. go send your funds or you represent. The, the NAACP does not support candidates, the nonpartisan organization. This is not in support of candidates. I, I understand. I, I just want to disclaim, put a disclaimer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so in my verb, it's just for clarity. I never said in support of candidates. All right. So All right. in the verb, it's never stated that so no disclaimer was necessary to right. this protocol. How things right. Okay, Mr. my room. Thank you, Mr. Downey. <laughs> I mean, Mr. 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 Wadi, Mr. Wadi, thank you for uh, adding your input. But anyway, Mr. Monroe, thank you very much. You didn't, you didn't say anything. I don't think it was a uh, water. In any event, legal redress. No, I'm sorry. Housing and labor industry. I'm going to go past that. Uh, legal redress, I mentioned to you, I would really like to have somebody to um, let me know if they're interested in doing that because I'm kind of monitoring it now because I get notices of complaints. What's Can you read that for me? I'm sorry. I've asked the question. Yes. Oh, um, we're gonna go past housing and labor. No, what you just said about if someone is interested in- Yeah, housing. interested in legal redress. Um, 
you don't have to be an attorney just to hear complaints. But if somebody's interested in legal redress, be sure you just bring it to my attention for consideration. Because right now I'm trying to monitor it as I get complaints. I'm trying to monitor these things. Um, but I, as I ask everybody, please put your reports in writing. Uh, some of you know Reverend Jones, a full-time pastor, a full-time lawyer all around the country. I represent people all around. So if I don't get it in writing, you can be pretty sure I'm going to forget it. So when I get it in writing, it's something I can hold on to and I know what's going on. So if somebody can, so I want to mess with legal redress as much as I am now, if somebody's interested, please let me know for consideration, okay? Uh, as far as membership is concerned, that's the Devin point is here, yeah. Come on, Sister Devin. Sister Devin, give us your wonderful report. <laughs> to be on time and i was sitting at the other church for you who's sitting there oh, oh. So freedom, oh. um christine there we are kingdom celebrating sitting there and we found out there was no car in the yard and she pulled up <laughs> oh, there's something wrong is but pulled the ten o'clock here right. and then we called we found it was not there it was right, here right. you don't want to call me <laughs> that was you <laughs> Sure. Okay. And, uh, oh, sorry. and I called my son and said, Where is he? He's going to be on time. And then I'm like, Yes, we so glad to see you. We're 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 glad to see and Women History Month, and mm. Jones is admissible with you. We would like to send uh, an ad to the paper uh, requesting anyone that would like to take out a membership for any woman that can do that. So we're going to designate March as the NAACP Woman of the Woman of the Year Month, and we're going to try to get a uh, mm. membership for that. But we want to thank Mr. Raff, who um, I think Mr. Raff, because Raff is keeping us up to date with the membership and what we said that we have four uh, civil rights mem uh, pledges for this year for 2023. Mm. And we have 585 financial members so far. Mm. So one of the membership oh. goals is that when we have our Freedom Fund uh, banquet that we have 1,000 financial members and if that's the case, we're halfway there. Mm. And so, Ralph, thank you so much for sending this report to me because we are going to work extremely hard that by November that we will have those 1,000 financial members. And for every single one of you in here, we're hoping that you would join us in getting, what, 500, we got about 428 or 79 or something uh, members left. And I know that we can do it. Because I would like for our president to uh, say in, at our uh, Freedom Fund banquet that we have 1,000 plus mm -hmm. uh, financial members. So that's one of our goals that we are going to be working on. Another goal we're working on is that because nationally it takes some, a long time to get membership, uh, membership card to our members. So what we want to do this year, we want to have a, a branch membership card. We're working on a brand membership card and then Tony, that's where you come in. We're going to and 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 um, ask you if you work with me. I have a, a a markup that I'm going to show you. And we want to try to get that because what we're getting from our members when they join, they say, I don't have a card. When are we going to get our card? They just keep asking her, when are we going to get our card? When are we going to get our card? And I'm only thing I can say is, well, natural takes a long time, but you can't keep saying that right. when they're paying their thirty dollars and they're paying their seventeen hundred dollars, or they're paying their two thousand dollars. So we're going to try to um, come up with a branch card, and that will be temporary for us. So we're hoping that uh, in March we'll have that card roll out. Also, the membership branch membership card. Uh, for 2023 um, in March. And oh, so, um, Matt and Mr. Jones, before we pass anything out or send anything out, we send it to you for approval. So, Antonio, I will call you uh, this afternoon or maybe the weekend if you can help us to generate, uh, generate that card. And what we're going to do, Mr. Thomas, once upon a time, we had a membership pin. 
And I'm not sure if we still can get those pins and off. I think the pin was about five dollars. Remember the pin that we used to have? Mm -hmm. I used to give my neighbor shit. Remember, we used to give them out all the time um, for members, and I even challenged you that if you had so many members, any member that would bring in at least five members that would pay subscription, you would get one of our membership pins. We're going to try to bring that back up again. We're just trying to use any incentive to get members to join because in November, we want to have those thousands plus members or whatever incentive, motivation, encouragement that we're going to do, we're going to put that in record. So we have three proposals that we're working on. One, uh, March is going to be designated as Women Month for the NAACP, and I'm going to send that uh, to you probably the vast amount of three kids of Reverend Jones to take a look at and give me the approval before it send it out. We want to send it out to the church. I'm not sure who's in charge of the church. I think, Ralph, we have most of the church uh, addresses and so on. And I find out, don't send it to the pastor because you won't get it. Send it to maybe to the secretary. <laughs> I know because they're so busy sometimes. Don't send it to the they, pastor, that's for sure. <laughs> They have so much to do and so that yeah. sometimes can fall by the wayside. So we want to send them to the church secretary. I was told to send them to the church secretary. Secretary or the or the um uh, uh, at least with our pastor, we have a, a church administrator or okay. any of the secretaries, and one of them should get it done. Okay. Uh, well, we're gonna send it to them to announce in the church that uh, what's going on in the month of March, and then we're going to try to encourage them to pass it to the members that they can do that. And then the second one, we're going to have the membership card. We want to roll that off in, in March with Antonio, with Antonio's help for that. And then we're going to do a membership pin. The membership pin, pin is what we call the challenge pin. If you bring in five members, uh, we're not even going to say in month of March because if uh, anytime we're in five members, we're going to give you, present you with your pin. We'll get it to you if we have to come to your church. And present it to you, but we want to try to encourage our members that we have now, the members that's coming on board, to join us because we know that we are the biggest, baddest, and the boldest member of organization in the world focused on advocates for people. So mm -hmm. we're going to work extremely hard that we are on the top of the scale for this year. Yes, at the top. Um, Wait, let's, let's complete the report. Is that the end of your report, Mr. Devonport? At the end of your report. I'm sorry. Is that the end of your report? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, of course. I just wanted to add to it that we have application hard copies at the table. If you want to take some with you. I have applications. We also have, I have some on the table there. So. You do? Okay. So if you want to take some hard copies of applications, feel free to get a sample. Okay. Also online, if you go to our website, there's two ways you can you can bring up membership. We have a, a what we call a QR code. CQ. Yeah, yeah, QR code, <laughs> which is just take your phone and snap that. You can a member. We also have an online application that you can fill out and pay right online. That's that's much simpler to do than the. Since you gave me the back, I take them with me all the time. And just like EJ Hutter, where I go, my application goes with me. Okay. And I start passing them out. Now, I'm sorry, all the all the members here, but keep them in your pocketbooks wherever you go. and you, just happen to talk about the NAACP, just come across your mind. Just say, oh, I got an application with the like one. And sometimes when you have them in your hand, they'll fill them out and give them back to you. But if you say go online, oh, I'll do that. No, I don't. <laughs> so I try to have them, I try to have them in my hand with me. So thank you, Ralph. And we have more I was going to take up Thank you, Mr. John. That ends my board. And I was on the executive board line the other night, but I couldn't get on because I was talking to but so says, oh, you got to unmute yourself. I tried to look for it. Davenport, thank you for your report. wonderful report. Oh, well, yeah, another question. Right. Uh, about the membership pin, uh, is that going to be given to whoever with those five I mean, what kind of pins are going to be? Well, because you got already. I mean, you already have pins for, you know, as a member. A uh, life member or whatever. That's why I'm trying to find out what kind of change. Well, I'm, I'm, the one that I was talking about, Neva, I think it's just the, no one has to know. It's just a regular NAACP gold pin, but I get gold plated pin. Uh, we're going to do that one. Okay. Maybe we're talking about people that's coming on. 
and I showed me you might have four or five of them already. You probably want another one. I mean, you, could, you could design our own pen or design something for that. But meantime, until we do that, we're just going to look use the regular pen. Okay, because I know the, the pins say something. They're either a member or the gold ones are a life member. Right. So I'm just saying you're not going to give out the pin to a person who's not a life member just because they bought on five memberships. That's what I'm trying to. Not all. Well, you could just make it distinguishable from that one somehow. We we to that. I was going to the, I was going to the brain yeah. for a long time to find out. If they have other pins, it may be by now that mm -hmm. they have something new. But the only thing that I saw there was just a regular member of membership pin. Black one I saw there. And, and Sister Devonport, if you can be so kind, I see you've got a lot of your handwritten notes there. If you'd be so kind as to give me something short in writing, just it's like, oh, sure. Women's, women's Month for NWCP, the branch sure. membership card, and the membership pin. Just if you could just give me, it's like, it could be just a half a paragraph, whatever. You give me something. I gotta have things in writing because that's that's, that's what I follow a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, if you don't mind, I would appreciate that. No now, listen, listen, yo. We, unless there's some questions, um, Miss Richardson, if there are no questions, I'm gonna proceed accordingly. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. 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 Why do you have anything else you want to add? Um, for a little action from what you said earlier. Uh, I'll be sending out a meeting notice uh, to be able to uh, give you all awareness of the meeting uh, in order to prepare for um, the February 24th presentation. Uh, at the state delegation meeting um, okay. on Friday morning. And if you can't make it, please let me know. Okay. I plan to be there in person. I know Mr. Water going to be there. They're, so virtual. Virtual. they're virtual. It's all, all virtual? They're all virtual. Oh, shoot. I thought we were going to be yeah. there. No, they're all virtual. Okay. Chairs. All right. That's supposed to be. All members to come or just the chairs of the committee? Um, to be honest with you, uh, I have to talk with the, um, I have to talk with the, the, uh, yeah. the chick from the club. The organizer of the um, of the delegation meeting, yeah. so that we can get the copy the, the yeah. proper. Well, let me take this. It's this a table. Zoom meeting. I'm sorry. It's a Zoom meeting, so they don't generally let everyone into yeah, the Zoom right, meeting. Right, exactly. Get the sign. Get the sign up. Take the time to get an account. We are yeah. We already signed up to be on the schedule, right. and I already gave yeah. a list of people yeah. to yeah. be able to be on the schedule, right. and so I have to speak with them if I want to add. Uh, with 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 the uh, president has suggested in terms of having all the committee chairs uh, address it. I would like them to be there if they have if they give us something to put on the written agenda. And whoever is the chair, I would like them to be there to speak about what they give to us on the written agenda. That's my preference. Uh, other than that, um, I really you know whatever they say is fine. But just I want to have chairs so they can speak. Okay, what I want to do because we only got about. Uh, three minutes here. Let me just go through this press and publication. It's, I'm assuming Miss Miss Bond is not there. I talked. I, I, she's our new press and publication chair, but I don't think she's on. I am. I am. Oh, Miss Bond, do you want to do you want to say something short to everybody? Because this is the general meeting, so some people didn't get a chance to hear you introduce yourself like you did at the executive board meeting. Did you share something with us, real short, about thirty seconds? Yes, I have written something up. Um, first, I would like to thank. Um, Judge Claudia Barber for her guidance, positivity, creativity, and excellent judgment as the editor of the newsletter for the past few years. Her dedication set an inspiring example for those of us who wanted to volunteer on the newsletter team. The winter um, 2023 newsletter has just come out. Um, it's come out both in print and digital format. We did 70 copies of our 20 page newsletter and I sent a few copies to all the advertisers. We had a lot of interest in advertising this uh, for this newsletter and it's kind of become a problem because in order for us to fit all the ads in, uh, we, we've been trying to keep it to 20 pages because of the printing cost, but we may have to charge a little more for the ads uh, so we can go to 24 pages because we, we generally have a lot of stuff that we have to fit in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, thanks to Stephen Waddy, who drove out to Columbia, where I'm staying, in the pouring rain to pick up the printed copies of the newsletter. Um, he's the original inspiration for, for our branch newsletter, so it, he, and he's a great team partner. Um, Aksha Callahan did our copy editing this time. Judge Vicki Gibson was invaluable as our proofreader, and President Jones took an active role on this issue as well. Um, the cost 
for the newsletter printing and postage yeah. this time was four hundred and fifty eight dollars and seventy cents. Um, Minuteman Press, who's very um, supportive of us, suggested we apply for tax exempt status. Um, the next projects uh, that I want to com concentrate on are updating the website with Mr. Downing um, and to try to publicize that first place Stahlheimer Award that we got. Um, I'm going to try to maybe interest the capital in doing a little feature story on that. Um, and I'd like to do some more membership campaigning images on Instagram and other social media. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Bond, for your report. You know, you're doing a marvelous job. Really appreciate that. Uh, unless there's some questions or something, I want to proceed here uh, pretty rapidly. We actually uh, have two questions. Oh, there's a question? Okay, I'm sorry. Ms. Ms. Davis? You have a question? I see your hand up. Oh, Miss Bailey had her hand up before me. Okay. Um, well, it's okay because um, I know we're short on time. Um, so I could probably, it, it's just a real quick question that somebody sent me an email yesterday and they uh, they said they were curious about the area listed as uh, the NAACP Freedom Grove near Clay Street. And it says it appears that it is, uh, the area has not been maintained by the city of Annapolis Parks. And do we have any insight as to why that is not maintained like the other areas throughout Annapolis? And if somebody could just, if they don't have a quick question, just point me in the right direction of how to answer that question, please. That would be that would be with Dr. Garrett, right? No, no, no. Um, who would that be? We'll, uh, we'll we'll have to get back to them because uh, Miss Neva knows the history of it. But, oh, okay, all right. Um, okay, so just forward forward the email to Neva. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and there's another hand, Miss Davis. Yes, my question was for you, President Jones. You're looking for a chair for the Legal Redress Committee. Uh, I'm looking for somebody to come to me to be considered for oh, the chair right, position. I'm on the call. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. I want to get to Ms. Leah Green because I know she has something to share with us. Ms. Green, sorry to cut you off because we run out of time, but I certainly want to hear what you have to say. This is the prison. This is the prison uh, branch. The prison branch Ms. report. Green. Ms. Green, you got a report? Ms. Yes, Green, you're muted. muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ms. Leah Green, you want to give us a report? Yes, indeed. All right, quick. I'm going to just let you know that, and thank you for having me. We have a new Secretary of Correction, Carol Shrubs, is very interesting. That's going to be an interesting journey for us that are interested in the uh, criminal justice piece. We also have a couple of bills, but we're short of time. I won't go into it, but I will send a report to Ms. Um, Christine. Yes. Um, uh, what I really wanted to do was to, I'll send this report to her, but I'd just be remiss if I didn't say this. As a mother of a lifer, I've been in pain for 28 years. So I'm understanding fully how we are emotionally involved with everything we're dealing with. Not we can all agree to that. But I'm here to tell you that until we learn how to come together and get rid of the them and us mentality that many of us got, we're gonna still be talking about this 20 years from now. We really gotta bring this uh, humanity to the table. And I know from personal experience that I've seen people evolve after they know what's going on and you come at them like you want them to come at you with respect. And I'm yeah. hoping that we continue to keep the respect going above all else. And I guarantee you, we will be much, much better off. Yes, I just had to say that, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rev, I will make sure the secretary get my report. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Green. Appreciate what you said. Appreciate you getting the report to Ms. Richardson for me. I need to see the written reports. Thank you very much for, for a nice report. I appreciate that. Uh, as we as we wind down, brothers and sisters, because there's no religious affairs, and youth have, I'm assuming you have a youth advisor. And when uh, Ms. McKinney, is she online, Ms. Richardson, Ms. McKinney? Okay, all right. So she's um, win. The win. She's not. No, she's not. Okay, all right. Um, let me just me say this, Miss consistent with what Sister Davenport shared with her report. I've been inviting people. Every time I speak anywhere, I invite people to to join the NAACP. As you know from the Freedom from Banquet, when I actually stand up, and they got two people here. I've invited. I just want them to introduce themselves, and we're gonna conclude. So the two people that I invited, just let everybody know who you are. I know you all. Introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are. Then we'll conclude here. 
Come on, uh, Reverend, Reverend James. Really, my name is uh, Reverend Kerry James Jr. I serve as the pastor of Jones Church. Uh, and so, again, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm a member and looking forward to uh, get active. And I'll say it here. Um, I even uh, volunteer uh, to be considered for uh, religious affairs because that's so important. And so um, hopefully um, I can work with the committee or chair the committee, whatever the desire of uh, chair is. Uh, so I'm glad to be here. I expressed it about my concern about the legal affairs. I, I really wanted to get that up and running, but I told him I need to come, let everybody know who he is, be active, be, be committed, and then uh, and good law will down the road. I will certainly consider that. Anyway, brother, introduce yourself you. to everybody. My name is Reverend Cornell Jenkins. Uh, I live in Anne Arundel County. I worship in PG County, but trying to focus on where I live as yeah. opposed to where I worship. Yes. I'm here more than welcome to get involved. Reverend Jenkins, thank you for coming. I know Reverend James joined. Yeah, make sure yes. make yeah, sure I join. You join, brother? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So therefore, Reverend Jones on top of this. I'm going to invite you to try to get this. <laughs> <I'm right. laughs> give me some of those, too, if you don't mind, before I leave. Sure. I have some. So all hearts and minds are clear, unless there's something else I'm overlooking. I, yes. I don't want to omit um, Jonathan just yes. introducing himself and just giving us a little bit of blurb of what you're doing. It's just <laughs> like, on, brother. really quiet. That's fine. So That's this fine. man is a powerhouse in between what he does. So share with us. Come on, brother. 15 seconds if you don't I mind. I appreciate that, everybody. It's always good to be in the NAACP. It's home for me. Uh, I serve, I used to serve as a regional director for the NAACP for all of this, the mid Atlantic uh, region 7, which is all of the DMV. Uh, we didn't have a regional director in Region 2, so I served up there as well, which pretty much takes us up to Maine. So I was national staff for the NAACP for about uh, seven years, and here recently um, I started my own little nonprofit, and I'm still just kind of hanging around the NAACP doing some work here and there. So it's good, it's good to be home, it's good to be around my folks. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, thank, I thank you all for having Yeah, so you're always welcome, sir. Come on in. Oh, we your expertise may end up being a great help to us, so feel free to come on in. I just want to say one thing, please. Whenever we um, refer to the executive committee, mm -hmm. we're not executive board. Gotcha. The only board is the national. Thank you, y'all. Help Reverend Jones out. Let me know what's going on. It's new to me as well. The executive here. committee. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, thank you very much. I got one quick thing, too. You still have five books left. That we were selling at the Freedom Fund Banquet. Books are written by uh, April Ryan for $28. We still have five, five copies left. Five left. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, all hearts and minds are clear. I'm going to give you Reverend, the benediction. Reverend, uh, okay. yes. President Margaret yes. Morris here, very quickly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Monday, March 6th at 6 p.m. I think it's March 6th at 6 p.m. at the Bush Library. Uh, we want to have an impromptu town hall. We're inviting the police account, it's a police accountability board, all the public, all the coalition members, and anyone that wants to be a part of and can attend at, attend this last it's last minute, but important. All are invited. We hope for your support. Thank you. And what is it about, Reverend Morris? What is the town hall about? We are issuing a the coalition is issuing uh, a a police accountability report. And the town hall is that we can bring together the board. Remember, I mentioned it uh, in the uh, oh, yeah. caucus meeting about the board wanting to talk with us. We want to talk to them. We also want to hear from the public. So we're doing that as an action item, March to 6th, I believe. It's a Monday. It's a Monday, if I don't have the date wrong. Okay. At 6 p.m., Bush Library in Annapolis. All are invited to join this conversation. Real, real quick, Reverend Morris, I believe the Police Accountability Board, they're doing the... Uh, uh, community tour, right? They're going to different locations. Is that a part of it? Yes, the, the police accountability yeah. board, but the last time they had a meeting, I think a Reverend, uh, a president president uh, can, can attest to this. They only had one person show up. It's because they're not connecting with community groups. So the coalition, uh, CAST and others, we're gonna have on March the 6th, and I still gotta get all the fine lining, but I've reserved the library. It's gonna happen March the 6th at 6 p.m. We're inviting all the players. If it's just 20 of us, fine. The room holds 100. We need to have this conversation. There's a lot going on. And again, it's police accountability. The Anne Arundel County Coalition for Police Accountability, Linda's a member of it. She can, and Steve can tell you better. But uh, either way, all are welcome. Important conversation. Thank you very much. You're absolutely correct about that. I tried to attend one of the meetings with only one person showed up. And so she's right about that. In any event, all hearts and minds are clear. I'll give the benediction. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, benediction is going to come from Jude. There's only one chapter in the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25. <clears throat> now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before, the, before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us respond, amen and amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good day. And, uh, Amen. Oh, next one's gonna be. Yeah, that's why I was back. Yeah, I was, I was yeah, I saw you. That's it. Uh, you were saying something? Okay. Bye. -bye. No, no, no. Okay. See, this, this time, it was already set up. Yeah, yeah. That's good.